Einstein. So basically, she's co-presenting with Camilla Nocon, who is a PhD student at the Department of Classical Archaeology of the Jagiellonian University Institute of Archaeology. And uh, Camilla has uh, scientific interests focus on kitchen and cooking pottery from Hellenistic and Roman periods on Cyprus, as well as Greek and related pottery. And she's also a member of the Paphos Agora project since 2014. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, I didn't realize this. So, I think it's time to start. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. And it's, I'm very happy that you are here today. Uh, first, of all, I, first of all, I would like to introduce myself and our team. Um, my, te my name is Edita Puniak and I represent AGH University of Science and Technology and uh, Camila Notson from Jagiellonia University um, is uh, with me today. Um, we are going to talk about the 3D documentation of ceramic vessels and we'd like to uh, present you the results of our studies uh, which was made by our team uh, which consists of one archaeologist, one uh, metrology and three surveyors. Mm. Uh, as you can know, uh, documentation in archaeology is a very important task and um, nowadays uh, photogrammetry, photogrammetric methods are very common uh, and used for this purpose. Uh, to make the photogrammetry documentation of archaeological objects more uh, simple and uh, more accurate and even, and even faster, uh, the device called Focus Sphere was designed and constructed by one of the co-authors of this uh, presentation. Focus Sphere is uh, a close-range photogrammetric measurement machine consisting of turntable. Uh, I don't know how to work it. Okay, so it's a turntable and uh, the boom um, with the mobile trolley on which uh, the camera is mounted. Uh, it's a very low cost uh, solution to make the measurements. Uh, focus sphere uh, allows uh, us uh, for automatic uh, acquisition of, of photogrammetric data and uh, its characteristic features is that we know uh, coordinates of control points placed on the uh, turntable and we know uh, elements of external orientation of images. Uh, it has to be noted that uh, Focus Sphere is only prototype and it's still under development. Uh, so, uh, to document uh, the object, uh, first of all, uh, this object must be placed uh, on the turntable and then uh, the photos of this object are taken from all its sides. Uh, for this purpose, focus uh, sphere uh, make alternate movements between the trolley and the turntable. Uh, first, at the beginning, the photos uh, are taken from different position uh, of the camera mounted on the uh, boom, as you can see here. Uh, and then uh, the turntable moves to uh, another position uh, and uh, the process of taking photos from different position of the camera starts again. Uh, in this way, mm. the photogrammetric data uh, are collected and uh, can be processed uh, in photogrammetric software such as Agisoft Photoscan. Uh, uh, because we know the coordinates of control points which are uh, on the uh, turntable and we know the elements of external orientation of images, the process is uh, quite fast and uh, it's uh, more accurate in traditional way. Uh, <coughs> as a result, uh, result, we can obtain some photogrammetric products such as dense point cloud uh, mesh models with uh, high, resolution, high resolution texture. Now when you know what is focus sphere, I'd like to present you our aims of study. Um, uh, dur during this presentation, we focus on verification of the accuracy of 3D models, 
uh, which are created with the focus field. Um, however, now I would like to uh, say a few words about the verification of the accuracy and uh, repeatability of camera positioning in focus field. These two parameters uh, can uh, told us, can inform us about the accuracy and repeatability of uh, elements of external orientation of uh, photos which are taken uh, with the use of focus field and uh, these two parameters are determined in accordance to the standard for uh, robot test for testing robots uh, these measurements uh, were divided uh, into parts and uh, were done uh, with the use of a laser tracker uh, and the accuracy the measurement accuracy is 0 0.1 millimeter uh, in both cases, uh, 30, 30, uh, 30 series of measurements uh, were carried out. Uh, in the case of uh, camera positioning, uh, there were uh, made measurements in four points where a trolley stops on the boom. And on this basis, we estimated that the um, camera positioning repeatability is better than uh, one, uh, 0 0.1. 0.1 millimeter. Uh, similar uh, measurements were made for uh, the turntable. Uh, in this case, 20 different positions of turntable uh, was measured also in uh, 30 series. Uh, the uh, parameter of repeatability is a little worse and uh, is about 0 0.5 uh, millimeters. But uh, as a conclusion, I can say that uh, <coughs> the repeatabil repeatability of the device is better than one millimeter, and uh, it was uh, the value uh, estimated by the constructor of this device. Uh, but I think it's time to move to our to our main goal. So uh, you know, I'd like to talk you talk about verification of the accuracy of 3D models. Uh, which were created on the basis uh, of photos taken uh, with focus view. Uh, the first step of uh, this studies uh, concerned selection of the vessels which uh, were documented. Uh, I think that uh, this process will be the best described by uh, our archaeologists from our team. So, uh, Camila Flores. Thank you, Marita. Um. So I would like you. I would like the relocation for our selection of uh, our uh, vessels. Uh, all the vessels which are uh, visible in here uh, are from the Jagiellonian University uh, Institute of Archaeology and uh, from the our collection of uh, antiquities. And we decided to choose uh, seventeen uh, first uh, vessels were uh, selected, uh, but we decided to choose uh, vessels. Uh, which uh, can be divided to the uh, different groups. First of all, the chronology, the very, very old one from the uh, Bronze uh, Age, the Archaic period uh, from Cyprus, and uh, the second group was the uh, decorated vessels uh, from the Corinthian and uh, Athenian and uh, Campanian uh, workshops. And um, what was really important for, for us, it was the size and the sparsity of the object. And you can see that most of the vessels uh, which were chosen are quite rounded. Uh, the, the second most important thing was the stable uh, setting uh, on the uh, of the vessel or on the table. Uh, we chose uh, um, objects uh, with open and closed form, as well as uh, flat frames and the handles, which uh, are uh, which are yeah, which are not. Uh, so uh, big. Um, another very important uh, thing was uh, uh, um, external surface, which should be uh, rather matte or glossy, because we would like to see how uh, it's going to be with the uh, glossiness of the vessels, especially that um, that one from the uh, black figured and uh, red figured. Uh, technique. Uh, so as, uh, as I said, we decided to, uh, to decorate at 17, but uh, at the final stage 8 of them, well, 
uh, what were uh, documented. So uh, this is <laughs> uh, this is a um, uh, very simple slide, and I would like to to say something about the uh, the basic of, uh, the basics of the uh, documentation. Uh, well, uh, archaeological documentation of the pottery. So as we all are uh, archaeologists, we do exactly know how to do it. But you know, the most important thing uh, is to show the uh, vertical cross section of the vessel. But now, thanks to the uh, our uh, team, we are able to show much more, and Edita will tell you uh, about our steps of the, our project. I think. So the next uh, step, the next obvious step of our study was to uh, create photogrammetric documentation of uh, selected vessels. Uh, of course, we use for it uh, focus view. Uh, now I'd like to draw your attention only to the problems which occur during uh, this process. Uh, so uh, we have some problems with glossy objects. Uh, as you can see, uh, as you can see, uh, the creating dense cloud and uh, aligning photos was problematic uh, for such uh, vessels. Fortunately, we found the solution, which uh, wasn't very uh, complicated. Uh, correct light control and uh, using dunning spray turned out to be uh, very helpful and uh, helped us to obtain correct photogrammetric products for these vessels. Mm, uh, we also like to verify uh, the accuracy of uh, obtained models and uh, we perform reference measurements uh, with measuring arm. Uh, using this device we do measurement with accuracy uh, of 0 0.3 meters and uh, it's uh, worth to say that the type of measurements it's, is such trigger measurements and the position of the, of the probe which is situated at the end uh, of the arm uh, is determined during the measurements. And our reference measurements was, were based on uh, the points which were place, uh, placed on the surface of the, measure, uh, of the vessels especially on uh, characteristic sections. Uh, the measuring uh, procedure, especially preparation for measurements, was uh, rather time-consuming. Uh, in this step, uh, selection of char characteristic points uh, being uh, control network and definition and indication of uh, char characteristic section was uh, most important. Uh, after that, data acquisition was uh, rather fast, but uh, there also uh, occurred some problems, uh, and uh, it was connected with no possibility to measure complex shapes and uh, no possibility to measure accurately points where two uh, arches meet. As you can see here, it's because of the radius of the probe. Uh, the processing of uh, reference data uh, takes several steps. The first one uh, concerns the projection of measure points onto section planes, and it was uh, rather um, simple. Uh, the second one uh, was the most important, but also the most problem pro problematic uh, step uh, during the development of data, uh, because we must to uh, re reduce uh, our measurements because of the radius of the measuring probe. Uh, you should know that during the measurements the center of the probe, the coordinate of the center of the probe is determined. Uh, 
and uh, we are interested in the coordinates of the points uh, which are placed on the surface of the vessels. So we have to uh, take this offset uh, into account. And the last step of uh, our de of data development was uh, quite simple, and it was connected with drawing the spline lines. Uh, as a result, we get uh, the final uh, section lines, section lines of our vessels. Uh, in this way, we documented uh, seven vessels, and uh, we estimated that the accuracy of section lines is about 0 0.3 millimeters. Uh, section lines uh, was then compared with uh, photogrammetric models and the drawing documentation for each object and for each uh, section which we measure. Uh, and let me show you the results only for uh, one vessel because of the time. Uh, as, uh, these slides show the vertical section of uh, one of uh, the vessels and some characteristic um, places of this section. As, it, as you can see, the um, difference, uh, the distance between the uh, section line and the uh, photogrammetric model is about 0 0.5 millimeters. Uh, on second, the next slide shows uh, one of the horizontal section, and here you can see the obvious advantage of photogrammetric uh, documentation. As you can see, uh, the photogrammetric model is very, mo very detailed and uh, uh, using the measuring arm did not allow us to reconstruct the shape of the vessel as uh, detailed as a photogrammetric tool. Uh, however, this uh, slide sums up uh, the results of uh, all our analyses and uh, the parameters which are here uh, are related to all uh, measured object and all measured section. As you can see, uh, the accuracy of uh, 3D models, 3D photogrammetric models are uh, is 0 0.4 millimeters. Uh, what is what's more, uh, there is no systematic error between uh, these two data sets because the mean value of the distance between uh, section lines and the photogrammetric models is only 0 0.1 millimeters and it's the value um, less than the accuracy of reference measurements. <coughs> Uh, in the end, I'd like to show you only the comparison between the section lines and the drawing uh, documentation of the same vessels. As you can see, the differences are much bigger and exceeded uh, even 4 millimeters in some places. And uh, as a conclusion, uh, I'd like to underline that uh, focus sphere um, uh, can be used for documentation of archaeological objects and meet the strict condition of geometry and texture accuracy. Uh, this uh, method is uh, safe for objects and uh, is, it can be fast and reliable uh, solution for uh, digitalization of selected <coughs> objects of, or even the entire collections. Uh, and it's everything we'd like to show you today. Thank you for your presence. And we are, looking, we are encouraged you to ask questions.